My name is Shiv Ganapati. I am the Senior Managing Consultant for Spiren Security Labs team. Today we are going to be looking at a web application hacking demo. Let's first take a look at the application. So this is a banking type of an application. Um, let's go ahead and log in to the application. So it's asking for the login ID and the password. So let's log in with the IDs that we have here. So as you can see, uh, this is a typical uh, banking site uh, where you have uh, a section where you can see the account summary, summary uh, and uh, you can see the account activities in your savings account, account activities in your checking account so on and so forth. You have some screens where you can transfer funds uh, which tends to be very attractive uh, from a hacking standpoint. Um, there is a pay bill section where one could uh, essentially pay bills. Um, there is a money map and then uh, there are um, you know other sections like you know online statements and things like that apart from the profile pages on the top. Uh, so in a in a typical uh, web application hacking scenario, the hackers are are, um, are are going for the lowest hanging fruits first and try and penetrate the system as quickly and as easily as possible. Um, so one such section which tends to be most attractive is either the transfer funds or when you are actually paying the bill. Um, now let's take a look at one such example here. Uh, we're going to be looking at the purchase foreign currency uh, section. So as we were uh, are browsing um, through the application, the web application itself is uh, essentially communicating with the server uh, through HTTP requests. Um, and the server uh, acknowledges that fact and responds back um, with HTTP response. Um, so the request and response is really the key element um, for any type of web application hacking. Um, so one such request is this uh, purchase currency transaction. Um, let's take a look at how a trained hacker would approach this. Um, uh, you know, they would have a proxy tool um, in the background. Um, and essentially look at all the transactions that goes from the client to the server. So one such transaction is this where the browser is sending this request where it's saying hey I want to convert this currency uh, which is an Australian dollar give me the rate uh, for it and the server responds back with a HTTP 200 and says here's your data and that's what gets displayed on the application itself saying hey this is you know for one Australian dollar this is the value so that so that's how the application is designed uh, from the first step uh, a trained hacker would do is essentially take this request for example um, and try and manipulate this request uh, into giving us more information so Let's, the first thing that they would do is, is modify the input. One of them, by modifying the input, what I mean is creating or introducing a um, special character like a single tick. Um, let's see what the application does. The application responds back with, uh, with an error. Um, you know, we just don't stop there. We go in and look at what the error looks like. Ah, as you can see, you know, there is an exception. And the application actually gives away some information about the exception. Uh, this is typically uh, a no-no uh, in a web application, um, you know, uh, especially when the web application is deployed in a production environment. Uh, so as you can see, the application responds back and says, hey, uh, you have a bad SQL grammar, and uh, here is the actual statement that they are using in in the application. So basically whatever we are sending in as an input, uh, they are basically taking that and inserting that in their SQL statement directly, um, which uh, can lead to SQL injection. Now this resulted in an error. So let's see what happens if we try and close that 
uh, to see if that error goes away. Uh, ah, as you can see, uh, once you uh, essentially close that SQL statement, the application came back and uh, responded back uh, and said there is no data. Uh, at least the error went away. So as a hacker, we are able to um, essentially create a failure scenario and we are also able to come out of that failure scenario. Uh, and we got some information about how the application handles inputs and uh, and essentially the SQL statement that, that stays behind that. So let's modify the statement a little bit more uh, using a technique called SQL injection wherein um, the hacker is modifying the input and providing a, a carefully crafted input uh, to extract some additional data from the system. So we're going to try and see if we can expand that SQL statement a little bit further uh, by asking a true or false type of a question. So all we are doing here is uh, we are saying, um, you know, a single tick and one equals one and one equals one is always true so we are seeing what type of response uh, is going to come back uh, when we do uh, that when we do that we are getting an error so let's try and close that statement let's see if the error goes away it didn't um, le let's uh, go ahead and try and uh, add some more um, as far as the SQL statement is concerned um, to try and expand on that uh, a little bit further to see if that error uh, would go away. So in this case we are adding a true statement and then another true statement uh, and leaving it as is. Uh, as you can see uh, the application took the input it, you know, we satisfy the condition for the application SQL statement. Uh, it is able to evaluate whatever uh, the attacker um, uh, that that we are sending in, and the application is responding normally as you, as it would when you actually just send in this piece of information. Um, so this is exactly the same as that. So now we know a true condition. Um, let's see if a false condition we asked a equals a now let's ask if a equals B you know you know all we are doing is we are creating a false condition at the moment so this should fail and it failed and the false condition is basically the rate is is empty um, so now as an as a hacker I am able to understand how the application reacts to a true statement and how the application reacts to a false statement now we could expand on this further by using the uh, uh, the inputs further. So we can ask some true or false kind of question. Uh, instead of asking one equals one, we can ask if this is greater than that. So we provide two numbers and ask, is this greater than that? If it is greater than that, it's going to give me the true response, which we already know about. Um, so now we got a little bit more knowledge about the application and how we can insert certain inputs uh, to get the data that we are um, that we want. So this technique is called a blind SQL injection. The application essentially is not giving away much except that we are able to create a true response and a false response. So we can ask some questions to the database and the database will answer in either a true format or in a false format so as a hacker we can infer whether whatever attack that we are sending in is it true or not um, so let's take a, a little further look at this um, we want to find out what the version of the database is as the next step um, if that's the case you know we could expand on this attack a little bit further and ask you know if this ASCII character is greater than 56 um, you know uh, based on the ASCII table so one by one we can essentially figure out what the version of the database is uh, again uh, we are still using the two ands that we used before it's just that we are carefully crafting an input in this case to extract the data so in, even in this case the output uh, came out to be pretty similar to the true output so that means that whatever conditions that we are asking here uh, is all true so um, as you can 
refine this further first we identify what the database version is then we can go ahead and find out you know how many users exist you know so you basically ask the question of you know count the number of users if the number of users is more than this uh, then give me a true answer if not give me a false answer kind of thing and the application is going to give us true or false kind of information and from that we can infer what type of uh, or how many users exist within the application um, so we we can extrapolate this further and and uh, essentially uh, go deeper and deeper uh, to get additional information so here's uh, you know the here are sort of the output that we were able to gather about this particular attack uh, wherein we started off with a simple SQL injection and then uh, we said okay there is a blind SQL injection possibility uh, and then uh, we can use stacked queries and ask questions uh, so the first thing that we established was um, you know what type of database it is and then uh, what is the banner uh, that it's using um, and then uh, we were able to extract you know what is the database name or the schema name in this particular case it's called public and then uh, we were able to extract the different tables that exist within the uh, application now as you can see as we move further um, as a hacker we are most interested uh, at least initially in the usernames and passwords so we can essentially you know grab the whole thing um, like keys to the kingdom so to speak through this process uh, so the the most interesting thing as I said is the user uh, table so let's take a look at what we found in the user table uh, in the user table we were able to extract this uh, database wherein we are able to first of all identify the IDs, the social security uh, numbers and the usernames and passwords uh, voila so essentially you have uh, the entire set of not only the usernames and passwords but also the social security numbers of that particular clients uh, so as you can see how uh, a SQL injection which uh, essentially started off by um, going back to the original request where you you are starting off with a request like this and then you are inserting a character like that and then once the attacker has an info additional information about the system which is just this uh, exception details uh, we are able to build our attack based on that and perform a, a full-blown SQL injection attack and extract the database information from the application so not only that uh, the usernames and passwords uh, we were able to identify all the other tables that exist uh, within that database uh, all its values uh, basically an entire database dump of the application uh, as you can imagine this can uh, seriously cause uh, some serious damage to the reputation um, uh, with, uh, with the customers and it's important to secure this information by uh, appropriately um, creating um, uh, you know first of all testing to make sure that the application is tested for SQL injection um, and the application is, is not penetratable uh, from an input standpoint um, performing uh, you know using stored procedures and things like that and not using directly uh, inputs directly from the user uh, which can uh, lead to a SQL injection thanks a lot